so let's talk about one of the shooting units with some of the best firepower in all of Warhammer 40k. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, where today we're talking battle suits, and more specifically broadsides. Basically being enormous walking guns, they're almost always going to be a unit that's worth watching every time Tau get an update, as they're likely to be some of the most efficient firepower in the Codex. With all the previewed rules for things like hammerhead railguns, or storm surge pulse blast cannons grabbing a lot of people's attention, I must admit I did have a bit of a suspicion that broadsides might be one to watch. It doesn't really matter if you've got a damage 12 weapon and a bunch of special rules, if it's just not quite as efficient for the points as a slightly less showy weapon, but one that puts out more damage for the points on average, particularly if it gets access to more buffs from the core keyword. In the video I thought we'd talk over the Tau Broadside datasheet, the various options and support systems that it can take, damage output for those big heavy rail rifles and high yield missile pods, some buffs and synergy to get more out of the broadsides, and a few thoughts as to how they compete with competitors and how I would field them in game. First up though, I thought I'd just mention the Tau Broadside kit from Games Workshop. Currently it's going to be rising to £35 from Games Workshop very soon, or $60 US dollars or €45. Euros. As they go, it's a fairly nice quality plastic kit with really quite a lot of options, holds up quite well to more recent ones, and maybe for 40k 9th edition at the moment isn't too bad in terms of points cost, in terms of pounds or dollars invested. There are certainly plenty of other choices that are slightly better out there for that purpose though. If you were looking to pick up any in the near future, I would just like to mention the channel's affiliate link, Element Games, which in the UK sells them for £30 rather than £35. Feel free to check that out down in the video description if you're interested. Any sales from the link go to help support the channel. And I must admit I have just picked up a couple myself. I had a small tab force back from 5th edition, and I thought that this new codex would be a good excuse to try and get it to a 2000 point list. As always with 40k models, broadsides are currently super strong, but rules really aren't guaranteed to last any real length of time. Games Workshop could certainly nerf the broadside in an FAQ next week for all we know. I suspect that they'll go up in points at least at some point, or maybe even lose the core keywords. I figure that they're a fairly decent battle line unit for the Tau army though, likely to be useful when quite a lot of new codexes come out. And of course currently in the meantime they're super dangerous. In any case feel free to check out Element Games. Could save you a little bit of money if you're in the UK. The link's in the description and helps to support the channel. Might save you a bit of money at least if you were thinking about picking up some anyway. In any case, let's take a look at their actual rules though. Broadside battle suits are available in units of 1 to 3. They're a Tau heavy support choice for 75 points each, and are a battle suit heavy infantry unit, though they have a stat line that's a bit more in keeping with light vehicles compared with infantry, to be honest. They've got a movement of 5, weapon skill 5, plus, ballistic skill 4, plus, strength and toughness 5, a mighty 8 wounds, 3 attacks, leadership 8, and a 2 plus save. Being infantry, that 2 plus save really works very well with dense cover. It means that even if you're hit by AP-3 things there, you'll still be saving on a 4+. At base, they're just armed with a heavy rail rifle and crushing bulk. The datasheets actually become a bit more flexible. You don't actually need to take any secondary weapon system at all, though I think that they're very good value for the points investors. In any case, the heavy rail rifle is a monstrously efficient anti-tank gun, 60-inch range, two shots at strength 9, AP-4, and damage D3 plus 3, and each time a successful wound roll is made for the attack, the target suffers one mortal wound in addition to any other damage. Essentially that means that for every shot that punches through saves, you're going to be dealing an average of 6 wounds to the target. Pretty crazy firepower on a 75 point model, particularly with easy access to buffs like marker lights. The alternative for the primary weapon system is the high yield missile pod, it's plus 20 points for the pair, and between the two of them they have 30 inch range, heavy 8 shooting, strength 7, AP-2 and damage 2. They have got a bit bitier in terms of extra AP compared with the previous version, but as you'll see from the damage output in just a second, I really don't think that they weigh up too well against the rail rifles. The damage output's a bit less efficient, never mind that they actually make the platform a fair bit more expensive as well, so on average you're less durable per the point. The crushing bulk is a minor combat attack, it gives you strength 6, AP-1, damage 1. A unit of 3 of them might semi-reliably smash away 1 or 2 enemy infantry models now, but with a weapon skill of 5 you really still don't want them in combat. Otherwise, besides those primary armaments, broadsides basically have two other hard points, they can either mount a secondary weapon or a battlesuit support system, you can't have duplicates on the same model of anything, and you can't have both of the secondary weapon systems, so no going for crazy firepower with twin plasma rifles and twin smart missile pods. The support systems are free, but we'll go over the weapon systems now. 
For 10 points you get a twin plasma rifle, so 2 strength 8 damage 3 shots, which is really quite potent to be honest, though in general it does seem that people tend to prefer the twin smart missile system. 8 shots at 30 inch range, with strength 5, AP-1, damage 1, and ignoring cover and ignoring line of sight. Obviously the plasma rifles will do you better against heavily armoured things, but the smart missile systems generally tend to be seen as better value points wise. Tau generally aren't going to have too much trouble with things that they can see, so being able to stack a whole bunch of firepower on things that they can't see is just incredibly scary for an enemy army to be facing, particularly ones with fragile infantry. The Seeker missile costs 5 points, and it's a single shot at strength 9, AP-3, damage 2d3. I guess potentially a unit of 3 broadsides could be interesting for the frequency lock stratagem for a barrage of Seekers. In general though, I'm just not sure it's really worth it compared with getting either a secondary weapon system or one of the very good support systems for free. In general, the way that most people seem to be going are twin rail rifle, twin smart missile system, and then a support system of some description. Speaking of support systems, we have five. The velocity tracker for plus one to hit against fly, multi-trackers for exploding sixes against hordes, and early warning override for overwatch on five plus and overwatch for free. All of those work basically the same as they do on crisis suits. The broadsides do get two fun and very powerful ones though. First up, the advanced targeting system, which I think is my favourite. Each time the bearer makes a ranged attack, an unmodified hit roll of 6 automatically wounds the target. A small but meaningful buff for the rail rifles, but this really helps out the smart missile systems against just about any target. It particularly means that they're going to punch up a bit better against high toughness things if they don't have any infantry to chew through. The other unique one is stabilised optics. This one allows you to move and shoot with no penalty to firing heavy weapons, something that really is quite relevant to broadsides as they are infantry, and unless you're in Montcar, you won't be able to move and shoot without taking penalties. It also eliminates the penalty for shooting in combat. In general though, I'm a little bit less enamoured by this one. If you really want mobile broadsides that shoot well on the move, Montcar generally gives you this for free. It's really not terrible though if you are thinking about going Kaoyon. Though in general, I think my first preference will be advanced targeting system, just for flat more damage output for no extra cost. The others definitely do have their merits though, particularly velocity tracker if you are expecting to see loads and loads of fly units in the meta. Finally, besides guns and support systems, you can also take drones, up to 2 for every battle suit, 8 points for the gun drones, 10 points for markers, 15 for missile drones, or 12 for shield drones. The missile drones their unique option, packing a missile pot. I think it's not dreadful, but also probably not one of the most exciting ones. For me, the main choice will be between shield drones and marker drones. Maybe a few of each. The marker drones to keep their own broadside unit hitting on threes wherever possible, and giving you another hidden source of marker lights. And shield drones just because it's really going to mess with enemy heavy anti-tank guns. It's going to be quite depressing pointing them at the broadside unit that you'd really like to kill, if you think that they're going to get eaten up by shield drones for the first few shots. A 4 plus invul gives you a decent chance of just struggling off the biggest firepower as well. Overall for support systems and upgrades, my take would generally be to take the smart missile pods or maybe the plasma rifles if you really just want to throw in more anti-tank damage. Lightly combine that with the advanced targeting system and then add in a few marker or shield drones to help make the unit harder to kill. For the primary weapons, I thought it might be somewhat helpful to compare the heavy rail rifles to the high yield missile pods. Heavy rail rifles being 75 points, and the high yields being 95. I've weighted both of their damage outputs per 100 points of unit firing at the targets. The high yield pods are going to be a lot better against anything low strength, particularly hordes and things, and will be particularly good against two wound infantry, as they have damage too. For heavy things though, in general the heavy rail rifles do run away with the contest quite well. They're slightly better against Gravis armor marines, averaging 5 wounds per 100 points versus the high yield missile pods 4.2, are massively ahead against toughness 7 vehicles with 7 wounds versus less than 5, and over twice as good against really hard targets, things like a toughness 8 plague burst crawler with a 5 plus invul and minus 1 damage. Minus 1 damage just really ruins the day of the high yield missile pods. In general with Tau, I really wouldn't be worrying about hordes quite so much, generally most lists are going to have a fair amount of pull shots smart missiles or air bursting fragmentation projectors to kill a bunch of chaff. I think the heavy rail rifles by far win this contest, and unless the points cost changes on them anytime soon, the high yield ones are going to be a little suboptimal. Though to be honest, are far from a bad unit, they are a massive amount of firepower on a core platform after all. Next up, let's talk buffs synergy and getting more out of the unit, with the many decent shooting buffs open to the Tau Empire. First up, marker lights for that 3 plus ballistic skill are basically a no brainer, and they could potentially supply their own via a marker drone. 
generally a fielding broadside without enough marker light support is a bit of a wasted opportunity, as that's going to be the easiest and cheapest way to buff their damage output by a lot. For tactical philosophies, Monkcar is just awesome for keeping them moving and actually going quite fast as well. If you get lucky, you could be moving anything up to 11 inches with this supposedly slow unit, and then still firing to full effect. Pretty crazy, and very threatening with those heavy rail rifles. If it makes the difference between them drawing a bead on the target or not doing so, that's going to be a really big deal. In general, I do feel that broadsides are generally going to be a bit stronger in lists playing Montcar than those playing Cao Yon. Sept-wise, as a big core battle suit unit, pretty much all of them do at least some good for the broadside squads, perhaps Tau Sept being one of the best and most reliable. They've got access to Shadow Sun, whose rerolls will go down particularly well on a big scary unit like these. They can use their Focus Fire for plus one to wound, and the broadsides could even be quite a good way of triggering that, as they'll usually punch a mortal wound through with those rail rifles. A single re-roll is always going to go down well on a broadside wound roll, and the aura buffs for things like commanders are going to be quite handy. It means that you might be able to have a commander both supporting the crisis suits up at the front, and also the broadsides on the back line with a massive 9-inch bubble. Most of the rest are decent enough though, I think. Sakir can give you a minus 1 to hit at greater than 12-inch range, and a stratagem for ignoring cover. Delith gives you permanent light cover, meaning that you're a lot more flexible with where you deploy them. They'll generally not even have to worry about hugging terrain. Borkhan's defensive buff is going to be really useful against any strength 5 or 6 shooting, and their inball stratagem could be okay with a railgun, though it's not really quite on the same level as the scary potential it has with a storm surge. Farsight enclaves are maybe a bit more suited to crisis suits, but they're still in a very efficient unit, and getting a free wound reroll doesn't hurt. Otherwise, by all, they can give you a little bit more mobility, and several of the custom sets do have their advantages, though tend to be a bit more limited in scope. As a core battlesuit unit, they can make great use of a lot of the characters, Shadow Sun or Commanders, as we said, for rerolls. Ethereals or Ornvar could give you the 5 plus feel no pain, maybe a minus 1 to hit as well, unless you're perhaps just sitting around farming command points. Dark Strider's Structural Analyzer could give you plus 1 to wound, great with smart missile systems, or particularly good on high yield missile pods if you're choosing to take those. And a few of the Warlord traits could be really helpful as well, Cao Yon's redeployment is great on a slower unit like these. And through Unity Devastation or through Boldness Victory, both of them can give you some minor shooting buffs, though you can basically do through Boldness Victory just with one of their support systems. I don't think the characters are absolutely mandatory to buff them, but I think in general it's going to be at least fairly easy for them to keep within 6 inches of a commander bubble, at least for a first turn or two, and if you do have an ethereal sitting around generating feel no pain and command points, broadsides are a very easy target to choose for that. Finally, stratagems wise, maybe there isn't quite as much going on. Crisis suits and units up close maybe get a few more relevant stratagems. Save your protocols is generally going to be a good deal if you do take a seriously hefty anti-tank shot. The repulsor impact field can really help you screen out enemy deep strikers. They arrive near you and then you basically deny charging on one. Coordinated engagement could be okay if you can focus down one unit and you've got other core units nearby. And the failsafe detonator could be good if you wind up in combat and the last suit does get killed. In general though, most of those are a bit niche maybe. Safety protocols and the repulsor field both great situationally, but perhaps sometimes the best value might be got from a command reroll of a wound roll from a rail rifle, or even just potentially firing overwatch if someone does try and assail your position. So how would I think about using broadsides in game currently then? For the most part, I think that the codex does push you towards taking three model units of them at the moment, there's a fair amount of buffs that go out on a per unit basis, things like marker lights or ethereal buffs, so units of 3 do seem fairly popular at the moment. As already talked about with the war gear, I'd generally be going heavy rail rifles and smart missiles, and likely taking the advanced targeting systems as well. I think I'd generally be tempted to take 1 or 2 units of them, as opposed to spamming 9 of them. They're absolutely amazing gunline units, but you can only really afford to spend so many points on a gunline. I think you'll start to get diminishing returns. You need to invest a fair amount of points in units that are actually going to go forward, take objectives, screen, or just go forth to deal damage to enemies that are hiding. Units like crisis suits, maybe. I think compared with quite a lot of the Tau army, the deployment of broadsides is going to be one of the bigger things. Ideally, they do really want line of sight wherever possible to their enemy heavies. You could rather just try and deploy with some seriously good line of fire, or maybe hide them out of line of sight if the opponent's got a ton of firepower and aim to get somewhere that you can move into it with a 5-inch plus D6 advance from Montcar. Otherwise, a cover save is awesome if you can get it, 2 plus armor would love light cover, or dense would be fine though it could slow you down. Screening them is usually going to be a good idea if you possibly can, 
you really don't want to get these things charged. Even if you can fire in combat now, it does mean that you've got a good chance of having very limited targets. If you are charged, then repulsor impact fields or overwatch both could be good options to at least lessen the blow. When they're a bit more exposed, they could be a reasonable unit for holding down home field objectives. With a whole bunch of drones plus their meaty defensive profile, they will likely take a fair bit of kicking before they go down. And ideally, they can just sit around railgunning the heavy units, smart missiling the light hordes out of line of sight, and maybe towing into the aura of a commander or something, who's hopefully supporting other units as well up the field. Overall, I think the broadsides really are a top-tier tower unit, arguably one of the best gunline units in the entire game in their current incarnation, the core keyword and points cost. I think it's really hard to go wrong with a couple of units in an army list between devastating direct anti-tank fire and a whole ton of ignores line of sight anti-horde shots, they're usually going to create at least some problems. In general, they will be winning most firefights against a lot of enemy counters, and I'd say that probably on balance, compared with things like riptides, hammerheads, or storm surges, they are perhaps one of the best gunline units of the town, and I think combined really well with a unit of these, comboed with a bunch of crisis suits taking the midfield and delivering damage up close. As I did mention previously, I really wouldn't be too surprised to see broadsides take nerves in the future, they're massively crazily efficient, and would still be good after a bit of rebalancing. I could see Games Workshop thinking about increasing the points cost of heavy rail rifles. Might not be the worst idea to at least make the high yield missile pods somewhat worth using. So I think we'll leave that there for the broadsides today. What do you make of these massive tower firepower units in 9th? And as always, any anecdotes of battle suits in action are appreciated, whether you are fighting them or playing with them. If you've enjoyed the video, feel free to subscribe to Allspets Tactics. I will try and keep some regular Tau content coming on the channel. I'm sure there'll be plenty more to talk about for the forces of the greater good. Finally, if you have been enjoying all the videos on Allspets Tactics, I would just like to mention that the channel has a Patreon page as well. That's down in the video description below, and it is the thing that allows me to keep on making videos quite so regularly. I do try and give some rewards to channel patrons, seeing certain videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things happen next on the channel, and automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways with a chance to win some really big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you, or you'd just like to help support, the link is down in the video description. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.